<sighs> boy. I relatively missed the early decade of the 2010s. Granted, it started out, well, bad, but all the bad led to some good and staples that were permanently etched to my memories, along with some of the BS I had to endure, personal and or not. But I'm more focused on one year in particular, 2013. Was it the start of a new me, personal-wise? Eh, who knows or cares, but many things throughout that year has brought a lot of significance towards me in entertainment, particularly thanks to this new block. Buckle up, boys. This jump leads to space. But first, a sponsor. Oh, right. Well, I'm new and getting used to the format that I'm now using. While I'm growing this channel, so please like, sub, and share so I may reach many more and procure many engagements. All right? All right. Let's get this started. <laughs> Animation Domination High Def, abbreviated as ADHD Typical, is a Saturday Night Fox Block spinoff of Animation Domination on Sunday. It is basically Adult Swim for non-cable watchers, and since growing up without cable until late 2014, it was a luxury I wanted more of. Even though I collected as much AS content in DVD sets and more so. This block gave me much to be amused by on Saturday nights and from the shows and interstoles in between and much later on FFX. So let's go over this, shall we? Launching in July 21st, 2013? Wow, the time just flew by, huh? And lasting for no more than 90 minutes a week. The block consisted of six originals with varying differences in style and execution. Some may jive towards you and I, some may not. But that's all right. They existed, they did their thing, and went away quietly into the void. Oh, that was odd. Anyway, not on par with what Adult Swim accomplished, Nick Widenfield, former development head of Adult Swim, I believe he's returned long ago, was set out to do, and what was created felt pretty unique to the Fox aesthetic. Now, here are the shows in question. One day, the scene of the fire, the cop found the perfect axe. That was the day he became Axe Cop! Number one, Axe Cop. Created by Malachi and Ethan Nicole, based off a series of webcomics, we're focused on this man of a macho axe cop and his partner flu cop. A regular bite-a-book guy and a cavalcade of allies as they deal with crazy threats and idiosyncrasies that surround our titular hero. For one thing, I do dig the heavy art direction and stylized creative choices and how it contrasts with not taking itself as seriously as it is. More so like the Tick series in a way, lasting for two seasons and 22 apps. The pursuit of justice never ends. We'll chop your heads off! I can't wait till I get old. High School USA. Created by Dino Statomopoulos. If you're unfamiliar with that name, look what he's worked on before. That's right. From the creator of Moro Oro, he brings us to the gang. A rather stereotypical clique of students akin to millennial upbringing and their daily life while navigating through the teenage years. Its style and aesthetic harkens from Archie comics but ramping up to 11 and not ballery. The characters are what somewhat sells us to the show, from characters like Marsh, the happy-go-lucky ray of sunshine who dwells in naivety, Amber, a typical pretty girl who's kind of a ditz, Cassandra, the vain one who harbors intimate feelings towards her personality, Blackstein, the African-American Jewish guy who goes along with the gang but is committed to his faith, and Brad, the overcompensating jock who is living with the most utmost shame, being voiced by TJ Mo- <laughs> All in all, there are things I did enjoy and things I didn't. It's art style, I'm getting a, a blurred secondary line art feel that's been multiplied in the series. Anyway, moving on. You know what would be a good name for a show? Black people, white cats? How'd you know? The Lucas Bros Moving Company, created by the Lucas Bros. I was a bit unfamiliar with this duo's brand of comedy until this moment, but I gotta say it was a fine introduction to their work, and being like me, a born Brooklynite, their show explores their interaction as broke movers who avoid work while getting into crazy idiosyncrasies while smoking marijuana, and being actively calm to just about anything. 
complemented by its simplistic art direction, it gets relatively easy just to get into the series, mostly out of everything in the lineup. I enjoy the series a bit much more, but too out there, but not overall crazy. Fun fact, I was in Atlantic Avenue in downtown Brooklyn a few months ago and spotted them driving through Flatbush. But for safety's sake, I won't tell what car it was and what color it was. It was okay. This series was a good watch. We'll be back in action after this. You can plop back now as we're back. Okay, congrats, you made it this far. And now we're getting into some traction. So like, subscribe, and share. Our path to a thousand subs is still going on. Now onward to our show. Away! She was about to take off her bra! Oh, <laughs> well, there's my telescope. Is everyone in this house a total perv? Golan, the insatiable. Created by Josh Miller. If you enjoyed Billy and Mandy, you could be interested in this one. I know I have. Centering around a suburban family, we're taking a fish out of water story and focused on a demigod warlord who dominated the dominion of Dracul until he was ousted and taken in by said suburban family. The cause was their morbid goth daughter, Dylan, summoning the said character. Anyway, hilarity ensues with this chaotic duo discovering themselves and their dark destinies. Heck, this was the only series that graduated from being an ADHD series and into animation domination proper. Starting with a season two, which reboots its premise. And honestly, I wasn't a fan of that direction, but whatever. It managed to make its day for as long as it did. Moving on. Well, time for bed. <laughs> My name, Officer Bear. My beat, Cheeseburger Island. A town made up of tourists, locals, and who do we have here? Four troublemakers. relatively chill series such as this is something of a first for FFX and the one following this. Stone Quackers blends surrealism and artistic impulse that has a quintessential 2010s animation feel akin to regular show and other shows that focus on slacker characters. Not as much as an impactful but it's a relatively easy watch for more of a slice of life feel anchored by the characters of wit. Clay, Barf, Dottie, and Foil, Officer Barry. Stonecrackers gives this relaxed chill of nostalgia of a time I often thought of living. My tummy don't feel good. Barf, what did you do? I'm so sorry. Earlier today, I guess I also ate a bunch of those hair fresheners. Barf, you mean snake eggs. I mean, technically, I go. Major Laser, created by Diplo, Ferry Gowo, and Kevin Komatsu. Last, but definitely not least. We cap off this series focus on the titular character as a Jamaican super commando who fights against the totalitarian and dystopian regime against the president and his cronies. Anyway, originally pitched for Adult Swim with a pilot created from the actual group Major Laser, later for the series, it gives off this 80s-esque Saturday morning vibe with more action mixed in with the comedy and the abundance of house and cultural implementation as presented with the electronic music with the music driving the series. In a way, it feels like a light reminiscent of Black Dynamite with a moderate budget. But I actually do want more from this, but alas, 
nothing else. But what we got was good enough. And that is all. Six short-lived series that displayed the Black's potential. One would wish it would last as long as it did, but what can you do? Anyway, we only covered the shows, but not the creative interstitials in between. That alone is worth a video on its own, and here are things worth highlighting. Anyway, thanks for sticking around, and join us next time for part two in our ADHD Retro Retrospective. <laughs>